Warm welcome, everybody, to our service today. It's great to have you with us. It is a little bit different today. So as you can see, I am recording this uh, in the man's office. So that's where I am today. Uh, because for one reason or another, uh, we've had to do it a little bit differently today. So today, the service on YouTube uh, is, is just on YouTube. Uh, but there are some of us that are also down at Cheam Common Junior Academy School, and we're meeting live, but we're only live down there. We're not, uh, you're not seeing what's happening there on here today, uh, but rather we have recorded a service for you here today. So, um, so I hope that God blesses you. Uh, the themes are the same. But uh, the context is a little bit different. But uh, just keep us in mind uh, for all of us that are at Team Common Junior Academy as we meet there today. And we will be conscious of you as you are gathering around and seeing this particular service today online. But the themes are the same. So we're, we're thinking about that psalm, Psalm 51. We are all together together. Uh, at Team Common Junior Academy, we're, we're all meeting together. So I'd encourage you, uh, if you, whoever that you are there, whoever there is, just get everybody together. We're going to be gathering around the Lord's table. So um, if parents and carers, if you have little ones with you, we leave that to your discretion, whether you think they're old enough to gather around the Lord's table. Of course, we know that Jesus' invitation is come and join me at this table. Uh, but uh, look, it's just, it's wonderful to have you. Uh, joining with us today, and we pray for God's blessing on you. There's a lot going on in the life of the church at the moment. You'll be aware of the of the of the building works and everything that is really coming up to its uh, final days and completion. So please keep that in your prayers. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's good to have you. You can find out information, up to date information on our website, which is wpbc.org.uk you can go on to our facebook page so look up worcester park baptist church facebook page and of course you can explore what's on this youtube channel lots of stuff meditation services uh, you can follow what we've been doing and what we've been thinking and if you're new here then a very special welcome to you it's good to have you with us so let's come and let's listen to scripture let's seek god in prayer let's gather around his table let's hear the word explained and uh, let's allow god to do the work of renewal within our lives to renew us by the sacrifice of jesus christ and by the renewing power of the holy spirit let's come and listen to the word and worship god amen Let's listen to a verse of scripture. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to verse 8. Reading from the Good News translation. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. This was his pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. For by the blood of Christ we are set free, that is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such large measure. Amen. I'm gonna trust in God, I'm gonna trust in Jesus Without shame and without fear I'm gonna fix my eyes on the hope of glory For His day is drawing near How great is the love of God How steady is His hand To guide me through this world And though I'm weak in Him I stand Now when the 
So let's come to the Lord in prayer. I'm using a prayer from Martin Busso. Martin Busso was one of the one of the reformers, continental reformers. And this prayer is for the making of true disciples. So let's come to the Lord and let's seek him in prayer. Eternal God, gracious Father, your will is that we work together to create places among your people in which your word and teaching may be preserved and spread. Grant us your help who are gathered here in your name so that all we say or do may serve to make your glory known and contribute to the good of your church through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We're going to watch a video now from Alpha. Here's to trying something new. Maybe it's that thing you've always wanted to do. That random invite you didn't know was going to be for you. Or even just taking a breath before the first step. Maybe it's seeing how far you can go. Or honing a skill you've always known. Maybe it's trying something just for the fun. Or maybe it's breaking your barriers to make you feel like you've lived it. Maybe it's exploring your mind or wondering what life could really be about. Here's to try and failing, to discovering for you and sharing it too. To exploring more of this one life we get. Stay curious, try out. What a great video. So we are running Youth Alpha. It is secondary school age, A-levels, and a little bit beyond. It starts 7 p.m. Monday the 12th September at Worcester Park Baptist Church, so in the new build. Uh, it includes food, uh, our young people will be pleased to know, uh, a video which opens up some of the questions, the foundational questions of the Christian faith, and then invites uh, smaller groups to discuss. So now's the time. Stay curious. Ask those questions. Now is the time. Now's your opportunity to our young people to get together, to ask one another, to explore and see what's life all about. I'm going to ask John to share a few words about our upcoming Community Open Day. Thanks, John. Good morning. Well, I hope you're managing to keep up with all that's being planned for the next three weeks. There's our Welcome Back programme, which is all about opportunities for us as a church family to enjoy being together again. The climax of which is the family quiz and fish and chip evening in just under a fortnight on Saturday the 3rd of September. You'll find details in the weekly, uh, including information on how to sign up for that particular event. There's also the Community Open Day in just under three weeks on Saturday morning, the 10th of September. As the name suggests, this is to invite and welcome the local community uh, to pop in and take a look at the new hub and the rest of the refurbished building and an opportunity for us to tell them about uh, us and about uh, the activities that we offer to serve them as our local community. But they won't know about the Open Day, will they, unless we tell them, which is where you come in, please. We obviously are writing to people and advertising and using social media, uh, but we've had a couple of thousand of great little uh, invitation, print, invitation cards printed. There's uh, one side of it, and there's the other side of it. 
And these are for you to share with your friends and family and neighbours, but we'd also please like your help in delivering to the church neighbours in the avenue and several of the other local streets. So please will you help in delivering some? You don't have to deliver all 2,000, unless you particularly want to, uh, but it would be really lovely if you could offer to deliver some. Uh, any number, big or small, will be gratefully accepted. Uh, you'll find a link in the weekly to sign up to volunteer to deliver these things, but you can also tell me or Karis or any of the, any, uh, any of the other leaders. Thank you so much. Our reading is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verses 1 to 7. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised it, and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveller came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveller who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man.
The reading from 2 Samuel 12 and Psalm 51 are both dealing with the same event, uh, but they are written from very different perspectives. Of course, we had Psalm 51 read to us last week, uh, but this week it will occur again, but a little bit later on when we are gathered around the Lord's table for communion. So in 2 Samuel, it's Nathan the prophet that tells the king a parable and then in no uncertain terms tells the king, you are the man. Psalm 51 is a poem written by the king to God, realising what he has done. He is deeply sorry and asks God for forgiveness. So what is it that David did? What happened? What did David do that put him in this precarious situation where he's challenged by the prophet and he writes this psalm of repentance and confession, confession in his sins to God and asking for God's forgiveness and promising to turn his life around if God will just stay with him, stay by his side. Well, David had used his power as king to please himself. He had forgotten about God and for a moment didn't consider the lives of those around him either. The king did something that was very selfish. And then when he realised that he was going to be found out, he didn't take the opportunity to say sorry and ask for forgiveness then. Instead, to try and cover up his tracks, he did something even worse. He tried to cover up the bad thing that he had done by doing another bad thing. And you can find out exactly what that was by reading 2 Samuel chapter 11. Now David wasn't always a powerful king. When he was young, he was a humble shepherd, keeping his father's flock. But for a moment, David forgot that it was the king's job to protect the people rather than to use the people. And he used people around him in a terrible way. To make matters worse, David didn't even realise that he had sinned before the people and before God. So grievous was that sin, so deep was that sin, that it had become kind of blasé about that. And it took Nathan the prophet, it took his story to get the king to realise that he was the man in the story. He was that rich man that had abused the poor man. Having realised, then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. So he realises and then sees what has happened. And in horror, the magnitude of what has happened and what he has done strikes David. In a strange way, we're all like David to a degree. What David did was terrible. But David was a man like any other man, a person like other people. And because of that, he sinned. Though, of course, it doesn't make what David did acceptable. Even so, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans in chapter 3 and verse 23 says this. For all have sinned and for short of God's glory, David wasn't the only one. What he did was very obvious. It was bad and obvious. But he wasn't the only one. And in some ways, we all share in sin. It's something that happens across society, across humanity. John, in his first letter, says this. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth 
is not in us. We might not have done what David did, and I hope not, but as the Bible teaches, all people suffer from the same problem. To put it very bluntly, we're all sinners. But that doesn't mean we all do terrible things like David did. Most importantly, what it means is that we all see, consciously or unconsciously, to live a life independent of God and God's claim on our lives as creator. You see, we belong to God as his creation. We're his property, if you like. So what did David do? Firstly, having realised what he had done, he asked for forgiveness. And in the first instance, that's God. He says in Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2, Have mercy on me, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Even after David had realised what he had done and asked for forgiveness, life wasn't easy for David. There were consequences for what he had done. But the Lord forgave him, loved him and renewed him. David remained king of Israel, even though it was challenged. When we do wrong things, what might we do when sin affects our lives? What might we do? Well, like David, we should ask for forgiveness. But where do we discover the kind of forgiveness that we need? A kind of forgiveness where we experience love and that renews us as well. Well, when Jesus was eating the Last Supper with his disciples, just hours before he was going to be so let down by them and die a death, cruel death on a cross, Luke records Jesus around the table saying this. Taking bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you, given for you. Eat it in my memory. He did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood. Blood poured out for you. This is my body given for you. My blood, blood poured out for you. We find renewal in Jesus' forgiveness and love and discover it practically through the church. We find it in Jesus' broken body, his blood poured out. These things, means of our uh, forgiveness. And it's in as we experience forgiveness and love and renewal in the church, we begin to experience it there. We're assured of it by Jesus. It's brought into our life by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's kind of made practical through our life in the local church. There is no such thing as churchless Christianity. It is in the local church where we experience renewal through forgiveness and love given by Jesus and expressed by Jesus' followers, the church. Like David, we might feel anger at the injustices of the world around us, and rightly so. But like David, when we are challenged to look honestly at ourselves, we soon discover that we actually are part of the problem. You are the man. I am the man. We are the people. 
yet God, through forgiveness and love, renews us. And we experience that practically through the forgiveness, love and renewal of our fellow believers, the church. As we prepare to move back into the church building very soon, let's also take a moment to prepare ourselves through the renewal that God offers us through Jesus and his church. As a church, let's prepare to welcome people, offer a place of love, forgiveness and renewal, a place where we can have our lives transformed and renewed by forgiveness and love through Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us come to the Lord's table. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So we come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. We come not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come not because any goodness of our own gives us the right to come, but because we need mercy and help. We come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. We come because he loved us and gave himself for us. So let us come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body. Let's listen to the psalm today that we heard last week. The psalm that's given us the food for reflection and thought over these three services in August. I'm reading this time from the New Living Translation, but this is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom, even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back the joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. And don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And make me willing to obey you. Amen. The Apostle Paul tells us of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's give thanks for the bread and the wine. And maybe you'd like to prepare that for yourself 
bread and wine, whatever you have, uh, please just uh, take that now, keep it by your side, because we'll use that in a moment. But first, let's offer our bread and wine to the Lord. Father, we thank you for being able to gather around the Lord's table. And whether we're joining online or whether we are physically present with one another here at the school, we pray that you'll be with us, watching over us, pouring out your love and grace and your Holy Spirit as we meet around your table. It is your table and we are privileged to be invited to it and to recognise that privilege right now as we eat bread, drink wine, remembering that your body was broken, your blood was spilled for our forgiveness. So come and meet with us now as we are present to you around your table. Amen. So if you'd like to have your bread and wine handy, Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. So take this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. In the same way, took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. So drink this and remember that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Amen. As we're gathered around the Lord's table, let's take a moment to bring to God the needs and concerns of others that we know and love. So we just take a moment of quietness before we bring those to the Lord. Let us bring our own concerns for ourselves as well to the Lord at his table. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be full. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Cross the empty grave, life eternal. You have won the day. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. He's alive, and oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin.
It's been great to have you with us today. As we come to the end of our service, I'd like to remind you, if you usually uh, join with others at the Zoom coffee, then you will see the login details appear on the screen. But for now, you might like to say this aloud. Might be that you're on your own. Might be that we're with a few other people. But let's say the words of the grace to one another. And uh, even if we're saying them to ourselves, uh, we know that we're not on our own. God is with us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless them.